In 1997, after a two-year selection process, the Museum of Modern Art stunned the design world by awarding the coveted commission for its renovation to a relatively unknown architect as far as the United States viewership was concerned. Yoshio Taniguchi, with a reputation in Japan as one of its foremost designers of museums, was selected by the committee for the $650 million expansion project. With the new design, the museum will be radically reconfigured, doubling the exhibition space while retaining familiar features. And here is a look. An expansive light-filled hall links 53rd Street to 54th Street, where an entirely new facade is created. Here, two new buildings, one housing exhibition galleries, the other the museum's first standalone education and research center, frame the restored and enlarged sculpture garden. Mirroring one another, these two buildings reflect MoMA's dual priorities of art and education and reestablish the garden as the heart of the museum. In case you didn't recognize it, that is the voice of Steve Martin, the actor who is a, not only a collector, but one who has a strong interest uh, in, in art and in museums as well, uh, in addition to being a comedian and an actor and a novelist. Um, construction on this new MoMA begins this spring. It marks Taniguchi's first endeavor in the United States. Joining me now to talk about this project, the architect Yoshio Taniguchi and Glenn Lowry. He is the director of the Museum of Modern Art, and I am pleased to have both of them here as part of our continuing interest and fascination uh, with architecture, with buildings, with design, and with the inspiration that brings creative artists uh, to put together ideas in stone and in marble and in wood. Uh, and in glass to make buildings that we uh, admire and that have functionality as well. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Glenn, great Thanks. to see you. Tell me about the process, because what is as fascinating about the end result, which would be this magnificent building on 53rd, between 53rd and 54th, on, in between 6th Avenue and uh, between 5th and 6th Avenue, is the selection process. It was an interesting process. We recognize that given the complexity of the site, and in fact the expectations that existed for this commission, that we needed to have a process that on the one hand brought interesting new architects to the fore and also was somewhat transparent and open to the public. And we began with a tour around the world for some of our trustees to look at as many buildings as we possibly could find and to identify those that we liked most. And from that, we ended up with 10 architects that we thought would be really interesting to see what they could do. Uh, okay, now let me understand this. How did you select the 10? I mean, the, as these the committee of people who are going to make the final choice, they got in this big plane and they went around the world with a sense of, we want to look at anybody that's worth looking at, or was there a definition of the kinds of architects we're looking for? Terry Riley, Chief Curator of Architecture and Design, and myself sat down and we started looking at architects that really interested us well-known, unknown, young, old, it made no difference. And we sort of came up with lists of dozens of architects. We traveled around with a small group of trustees and just started looking. What building did we like? What building didn't we like? Who was it by? What, what was interesting about yeah. it? And that process slowly winnowed down, if you wish, both our expectations and tastes and those of our trustees and fellow traveling companions right. until we had roughly a sense of 10 or 15 architects who seemed to make the most amount of sense because they'd done work that was innovative, because they'd solved similar problems to yeah. our own. And Terry and I then sort of caucused and proposed to our uh, selection committee a group of 10 architects. We said, these are 10 architects, all roughly of the same, same generation, all roughly uh, at a point in their career where they would take this project extremely seriously, and we should invite them in and give them the opportunity to really think about the project, learn about it. And we gave them a program and said, let's do a charrette. Right. Spend some time to get to What's know us. What's a charrette? Charrette's an architectural exercise where you have a fixed problem and a very limited amount of time to come right. back and propose solutions. And we said, we don't want finished work. Right. We want to see how you think. This is not about which design we like most, but by the process by which you get to a design. Right. Because we were looking for someone that we could work with for four, right. five, six years. Now, it's my understanding that Terry, and he gets credit at least from what I read, the idea that these, we should view these architects as people who can help us in understanding the process of where we ought to be going. 
Is that it? I mean, that actually was something that came out of a discussion with Sid Bass and myself right. that also involved all of the other chief curators because previous to looking for an architect, we spent a year doing an exercise that we called Imagining the Future. Right. Stepping back and talking to Sid and a few other trustees about what we thought the Museum of Modern Art wanted to be, could be, should be. Right. And from that we realized that architecture could be a catalyst and a partner in transforming the institution. Yeah. And I think Sid gets really an okay, awful give, lot of credit for that. Okay, give the credit to Sid Bass, who's on the committee and, and on the board and all this. But the idea was architects can help us understand what the mission of the museum ought to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And can help transform our ideas into concrete, into something real, into something tangible. Now, obviously, people are going to be some great architects, friends of yours, I'm sure, are going to be disappointed. And they, because they, maybe because of age, maybe because of what? Great architects known to all of us. They've got to be unhappy when they know they're not on the top ten. There was obviously a certain <laughs> amount of consternation <laughs> within the architectural community, yeah. especially because, because we didn't pick the usual suspects. Yeah, so. Now, what was that about, not picking the usual suspects? And it, we all know who they are because they're the most famous names in architecture. It, it really wasn't an agenda. We set out to look with a very open mind and we came to realize that because of the nature of this commission and the fact that it fell at the beginning of a new century it was a real opportunity for a new voice or a relatively unknown voice to give articulation to our ideas and that we wanted to if one could say privilege a younger or relatively younger generation of architects but it certainly didn't start out by saying let's not look at this architect or that architect and what was fascinating about this in terms of a choice and it speaks exactly to this point about architects giving definition and ideas to our futures that we, we said very clearly the most important thing for us in this project is we wanted to make sure that contemporary art would really be seen to be integral to the museum. Yeah. And of all the architects we talked to, it was only Yoshio Taniguchi who came back and showed us how to make that happen. All right, I want to get to that point. Now, you were the oldest, oldest that had been selected in that 10 mm -hmm. at, at about right around 60, 61, 62. Right. I forget in the terms of the time this process took place. Were you surprised that you were included? Because even though educated at Harvard, you had returned to Japan as your base, as your home, as your place of work. Well, I was never in the competition before. Yeah. Of course, I was surprised to get the invitation from Terry Riley and the museum director, Glenn. And at the same time, I was a little reluctant to be in this competition because it was going to be my first experience. With competition? With competition. I've never been in a competition before, architectural yeah. competition. So, you know, I was thinking about should I be in or not? Although I was invited and I, was so, I felt so honored. Yeah. But because I have never experienced competing with other architects to get the commission. At the same time, I had some work to do in Japan and I knew, I sort of anticipated some difficulty if I take this job. If I, because architecture is not just like a painting or sculpture. I need lots of help in working together with other people. Then I have to accomplish this job in the New York City. Yeah. So also I envisioned some difficulty. So I felt a little reluctant. But finally, of course, you know, I accepted the invitation with my Okay, but finally, why did you accept it? Well, it's going to be a long story <laughs> because, <laughs> well, should I tell the truth? Yes, of course, of course you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote a letter already to, I'm sorry, I'm so honored, but, but. I cannot take this competition. Some, I read some reasons. But that evening, I went out with a friend of mine to an Italian restaurant in Tokyo, and we had drinks and we had a wonderful dinner. <laughs> and people said to me, some friends of my ar architects, said, you're sure you have never been in a competition. Why don't you try once in your life, you know? Then also my wife was, you're sure you should try this once. And some other architects said, well, I had, I wasted so many time for competitions, but why don't you do at least once waste your time? Then, you know, I said, okay. I told this answer, uh, no Let answer. And I wrote the yes answer. Because at that time, already, MoMA wrote to me, 10 out of 9 said the yes to be in the competition. You're the last one, so you right. have to answer because people are waiting. Yeah. So next day, next morning, I 
Okay, I'm very glad I'll be in competition. That's, that's the story, roughly. That's a great story. Now here, just to give you a list of, of America, this is all old news, but it leads to um, this an extraordinary sense. You gotta remember, if you're talking about New York, there has not been a lot of building in New York. This is a place that great architects like to build, want to build, but there's not a lot of architecture being built Absolutely. in New York. Absolutely. In fact, I think this is one of the first projects that's going to really come full-blown by a major architect here mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah. And, and having said that, too, the one thing that it seems to me architects love to do, and, and the most creative expression of architecture in the last 10 years, or last, maybe longer, that has taken place is in museums. You've seen it in museums. Absolutely. Museums are the preeminent civic institution of our time, and they are the center of a great deal of new and innovative architecture. All right, so here goes uh, Raphael Minoli, Bernard New York, Bernard Tashumi, New York, Stephen Hole, who's here a lot, uh, Todd Williams and Billy Sain, mm -hmm. uh, Jacques Herzog and Pierre uh, de Moron, uh, Dominique Peralt of France, uh, Rem Koolhaas and Will Aretz, and uh, Toyo Ito of Japan, and you. Mm -hmm. Those are the ten. How did you approach this process? Because what they want is what? You wanted what from these architects? We wanted ideas and the way in which they intended to solve the problem of our specific architecture. Yeah. And this is a building, uh, existing site, and there are things you want to preserve there. You've got, but did you give them freedom? You just said, come in and tell me what you think. You didn't say, you got to keep this, you got to keep this, you got to keep this, or not. No, we gave them a certain mandate, and we said there are, you have almost a free hand here. Almost. But understand that we treasure the garden. And we want to make sure that whatever happens, at the end of the day, the garden remains at the heart of the institution, emotionally and physically. Could you move the garden somewhere else if they wanted to? Yes. Okay. So this is a famous sculpture garden designed by uh, Philip Johnson, 1953, the Rockefeller Sculpture Garden. So how do you approach this? What do you do when you get that kind of request? Because well, everybody did it differently. That was not the only one uh, problems, but we were given lots of many difficult problems because site is right in the middle of Manhattan. Of course, we have to preserve very important element of MoMA. At the same time, I have to add something, my architecture, into it. So how to integrate between existing MoMA structure and my new architecture, very important element of my design. At the same time, I had uh, some problem because, as I told you, I have never been in a competition. Nowadays, you have, uh, uh, we have many different ways of presenting ourselves using such as computer graphics, sure. models, and perspective drawings. But my type of architecture is very, very difficult to present myself through these media because my architecture is not really based on very different structure form. Rather, I try to create an environment where people to meet works of art and so on. Mm. It's very subtle. That was uh, another problem, how I can convey my idea to MoMA. But as you people are talking about, I knew that uh, in that uh, thing, all the judges, people, or trustees were visiting my real architecture. Right. So I thought, well, I'm going to propose many ideas. But at the same time, I felt people from MoMA would get idea from real my architecture by looking at So I felt. You know, I feel comfortable when I thought about those things. Yeah. What, so you get these 10. In some cases, just sketches. That's right. In other cases, sophisticated models, right? Well, well we gave them a shoebox size envelope, as it were, <laughs> and said, whatever you do, it has to fit inside this package. Because yeah. we didn't want the architects over four weeks to spend an enormous amount of time and money creating elaborate models, because that's what we were not looking right, for. Right. We wanted their hand. That and comes later. That comes much later. Right. So they had to f make it fit inside this box. But of course, every architect... A yeah, shoebox like a regular size shoebox? More like the, the box size of a shirt box. Okay. Uh, 11 by 14. And of course, some of the architects found ways of cutting holes in the box so little models <laughs> right. could pop yeah, out. Right. I mean, there were all sorts of inventive solutions. Right. But mostly it was sketchbooks. Yeah. But you also, from Rem Koolhaas, gave you what was almost like a... Manifesto. A manifesto. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let's just go through. You got a sketches, you got a manifesto. Uh, uh, micro models that, were, that you assembled uh, because they had to be inside the box, so you would take them out and assemble them. Some fairly elaborate finished drawings. Yeah. Uh, and then lots of notations, just uh, written comments. I might do this, I might do that. You could 
look in this but direction. This was or that. primarily almost a verbal, as much a verbal expression as it was a sketch expression, it was a visual really expression. Be, it was really meant to be a conversation, right? With some visuals to stimulate the way we think. You walk in, and then they they, they come in and, and examine this stuff with the committee. Absolutely, and they sitting around the room. This is David Rockefeller and Aggie Gunn and and Sid Bass and Ronald Lauder and. And Mar you, Marshall Kogan. Marshall Kogan. Okay. And myself. And yourself. And so they walk in. And you do it for the first day, right? Yep. How was, would you feel like after the first day? Well, you know, uh, I had a very, you know, very serious difficulty because of my language, yes. you know. And again, I said it was my ex first experience. And of course, there are many ways to present myself in this one box, mm. but I try to stay very conventional, not playing with so much games. I try to convey message through a very conventional way. But also I have to talk to all these important people in front of me. I was very, very nervous. Therefore, I was so shocked when I was one of three right. out of ten. They selected three yeah. out of the original ten I yeah. just told you about. The first stage is more surprise for me than second stage because I didn't have any sort of confidence uh, in the first stage. But second the se stage, I got into more architecture. Yeah. Also, they saw all my real architecture. Yeah. So I felt, well, I'm very happy, but mm -hmm. you know, not a big surprise. But the first stage was the biggest surprise for me because they understood mm -hmm. my intention of architecture through such you were surprised that they understood your intention. That's right. Yeah. And also because I don't think yeah. I really presented myself so nicely as a, compared to other people. Yeah. But you're getting the hang of this competition thing. <laughs> 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 and, and so then you selected three, and then you did what? And then we'll get to the pictures. What we did is we said to the three, okay, now take three or four months this time right. and come back to us with a full-blown proposal right. based on what we really intend to do. Uh, so that this was really a si now a serious competition that was going to involve models, perspectival drawings, and really an argument for what the building should look like. Yeah. You know what amazes me about architecture? And, you know, first of all, you've got seven people here who are not in the final three. The world of architecture is full of, and has happened to you as well, where for whatever reason you go through the process of design, the process of the creative process, and it doesn't get built. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get built because the, something happened to the funding from the patron. It doesn't get built because some other reason people mm -hmm. selected someone else if it's a competition, which you said you hadn't done. I mean, it's stunning the number of interesting pieces of architecture that are just around. Yeah. yeah, I suspect there's more great architecture that hasn't been built <laughs> exactly. than uh, architecture right. that has been. Okay, tell me why, because you know, we're going to see it now, this group of august New York citizens selected Mr. Taniguchi. What did he bring that caught the spirit and intelligence of this committee? I think the aspects of Yosho's architecture that really caught everyone's imagination were the following. One, a clarity and sense of elegance to his design, a recognition how to use the subtlest and simplest details to create an amplified and powerful space. He also understood that architecture, in our case, needed to, on the one hand, respect the past, but not be a slave to it, and on the other hand, demonstrate that the language of modernism mm. was a supple and elastic language that could still have a vitality to it, but that could do so in a way that was absolutely contemporary. And then what Yosho did was to turn our own ideas upside down. We had an idea that contemporary architecture should be important to the museum, and that contemporary art should be privileged. Right. But we also tell a story at the Museum of Modern Art from the late 19th century to the present. And we wanted to make sure that that story could be told even better in our new galleries. And all the architects basically dealt with that. And they came up with a story in galleries that began with the late 19th century, and they continued in one way or another to the present. Yoshio flipped it upside down and said, you're going to walk into this museum, and the first art you're going to encounter is contemporary art. And you'll tell your story backwards. If you're really committed to contemporary Sorry. art, place it up front. Well, that blew us away. And of course, it also meant that the most powerful new galleries would be the ones that you first encountered. And, and so the, then you'll see first the contemporary art, yes. and then you later, as you go up the galleries, That's right. you will see the source from earlier back to mm -hmm. Picasso and others who are part of the collection yeah. there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Uh, let's take a look at some things and then we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm not sure. This is very difficult to explain uh, if you don't live in New York or exactly what's being done because um, because it's an existing structure and it takes a lot of, almost you need to be there walking around with the architect to get it, but we'll do our best. First, see the first slide. This, explain this to me. Well, this is a entrance of the current MoMA. Right. I tried to, of course, preserve this hist all each architectures. Also right. to bring it back to the original form. This is a, the one in the middle. But this is not going to be the entrance, the main entrance no. now, is it? it this no. is going to be the entrance to the film Correct. wing That's and all right. of that uh -huh. stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is, you want to leave that there because what you're dealing with here is not only the future because of the nature of the museum, but also a history and a tradition. Yes? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Next slide will show you the 54th Street renovation at the uh, Rockefeller Salt Sculpture Garden. There it is. So you're now looking at 54th Street, which will be the entrance. Show me more. Well, it is very difficult to tell. This is just shows on the garden part. The entrance is now is going to be for from both 53rd and 54th Street. Right. The garden will be larger? The site is larger, but uh, it was during the history of the MoMA. The garden was a little bit changed, size and configurations. We tried to bring this garden form as much original as possible. Hmm. Then we enlarged a little bit. Yeah. The other thing was central to you, as I understand, was that the, you wanted to see, you wanted to leave the Pelly Tower and be able to see it and use, to explain that to me, how well, you saw the juxtaposition with the Pelly Tower. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not only Caesar Palace Tower, at the same time, all this historical building of MoMA, including Philip Johnson's and Stone's and mm -hmm. Palace, I tried to emphasize the original configuration of each architecture. So tower, Perry Tower is a showing, of course, a strong verticality. Mm -hmm. Whereas now we have some base part. So it doesn't really go in down to the ground straight. So I try to emphasize this more for this new MoMA. So I, you know, you can yeah. see it from this right. model. Let's take another slip. We've got some more questions mm -hmm. about that. The next slide shows you the 54th Street facade. That's right, this shows. Right there, there's a, explain to me what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. This is an elevation looking from 54th Street. Right. So right hand side is a new expansion of right, gallery right, wing, right. and left side is the new uh, the new part of the education part of MoMA. Right. You basically have divided this up into one an education part and a and a and a and a, and a gallery part. Gallery, right. right. This right. is two most important MoMA mission: education, gallery, and education. Education Arts. exhibition. Ex right. That's right. Education exhibition. Right. So I try to express these two importance in physical form. Yeah. Now, explain to me, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you obviously, you know, are familiar with architecture around the world, that you were educated at Harvard, how did you get into the sense of MoMA and its mission? Well, because, uh, because competition was in two stages, and we had enough time to study not only existing structure of MoMA, but also I, could, I did have time to study all history of MoMA. I, yeah. read, I went to the archive. Yeah. library and I read all the history of MoMA and studied. Of course, you know, not only studying but also I, I physically went through the, all the buildings, then tried to find out problems, current problems in MoMA and possibility of the future. I tried to bridge between problem from existing problem and the future right. and also I, by learning history. So it was just a result of my study of all these things. All right. Let Yoshio me take yeah. Yoshio spent days interviewing visitors to the museum and the guards. Yeah. I mean, he talked to not only the trustees and the curators, he went down on the floor. To find out what? what were everything, you? everything, <laughs> you know, because it's, this is not really our first time for, for me, for MoMA. Whenever I design my architecture, first I have to know what clients need. So yeah. first I have to learn the influential element for site. Right. Then I have to need, I have to understand program, programmatic requirement of the client. So before I start designing, always I try to study all these elements before I'm starting. Yeah. So this is what I did. It's just normal for my regular process. You once said something that was interesting to me, and I can't see if I can remember. Basically, that designing process was like writing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and compared it to almost like a silkworm. You remember that? Oh, maybe I said, you still remember. Did I say that? Yes, something like that. Oh, yes. Because 
you know, when you're writing some, right, you have to kind of, silkworm is, what do you call it, you know, making silk from your yeah, mouth. Weaving or whatever, weaving yeah, right. continuously, right, right. but slowly, but very, with the same kind of rhythm. Yes. The architecture is a little different, but still you have to really think about sort of how to create and make one idea from different ideas, just like Silk Rome is creating silk from right, their right, minds. Yeah, right, I right. told you. So yes, you exactly. Yes. When I first met you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Now let me take a look here. I'm going to see all the things I got to see. This is. Well, this is the 53rd Street facade. Right. As I told you before, you can see St. Thomas Church right. on your right hand side. Right. And the that's on Fifth Avenue. That's right, on the fifth, facing Fifth Avenue at this side. Right. Then Philip Johnson's on the original Ed Stones, then Caesar Pelle and my architecture. So it shows just like a street of 53rd Street that shows the showcase of MoMA architecture. So it's going to be yeah. very interesting, I think. Yeah. All right, one more slide, which is 54th Street looking east. Mm -hmm. This is. So you can see this one entrance on your right hand side, that yeah. is a gallery entrance. Right. Whereas one on your left is education to, I mean, entrance to the yeah. education part. And on the right hand side, the, the galleries are stacked up on one after the other. That's and, right. and so That's as you uh -huh. as you go to the. Uh -huh. There are many possibilities of locating galleries. One way to disperse gallery in whole site. Right. The other way, to, many different ways. But I try to, because the galleries are most important part of the whole expansion. So I put all galleries on one side, one, one part, as much right. as possible. That's what's also another my idea. Okay, let's look at some of the other things. There is a book here that I have called The Architecture of Yoshio Taniguchi. Uh, there it is, and, and from that we've taken some pictures which I will show you and we'll take a look at. I mean, these are some of the kinds of things that he's done. Uh, this is, we'll see this, this is the Shiseido yes. Art Museum. There it is. Tell me what I'm seeing here. This is the exterior. This is the exterior. This is, I designed this museum. Oh, I think it's over 20 years ago, but this is a very simple museum ar architecture. Yeah. You can yeah. see, yes, this is the entrance way to the museum. Okay, the next thing I'm going to see is the Tokyo Sea Life Park. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the, 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 an aquarium I designed about 10 years ago, right in the Tokyo. And you can see this clay, big glass dorm facing right. the, 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 to the Tokyo Bay. This is the center of the fountain. The next is the interior of the aquarium. That's right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The third one is tents shading the restaurant terrace appear like sails of yachts of the bay. There you, boy, it does, doesn't it? Uh, next is the IBM Japan Makahari Technical Center, creating an environment in which architecture, the city, and nature brought into closest contact. Where, this is in Tokyo where? This is a city just outside of Tokyo. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is the um, Maragami Kinachiro in Akuma. Museum of Contemporary Art. <laughs> <laughs> you did that three times quickly. Yeah. Yes. I think this is a museum which Terry Riley saw, yeah. and also this is the one reason why MoMA selected me as a, one of the candidates, I Be think. Because of this? I think what is so. it you think they saw? Well, because of, I don't know exactly, because I've never heard what, you know, why yeah, they, right, they right. selected me, but anyway, I think that's the building. You think it's had some influence? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what this building does is it embraces this urban square and that huge portico that projects out really caught our imagination as a way of responding to this space. And we could imagine solutions analogous to this in terms of how our garden could be positioned as a major urban space. All right, here is the Toyota uh, Municipal Museum of Art. Exterior shot, and then we'll see and have you comment on the. We'll see an interior shot now. Okay, exhibition space for contemporary art. Tell me about this building. Well, this is the museum I designed about five years ago. I think all these people who came to see my architecture saw this museum. Right. And this museum was built for the city of Toyota. The reason why the city of Toyota is called is because there is a Toyota company, motor company. Right. <laughs> We're so all familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. Yes. And I tried to, this particular shot, Show, showing this yeah. gallery for contemporary art. I'm going to come to the tea house ceremony house, mm -hmm. tonight, which I'm very interested in, but <laughs> what is it about museums and architects? For me, it's a place for people to encounter works of art. Right. So I have to try to create an, an, an ideal environment yeah. for that. Very simple. It, it, it's become the quintessential public place. Uh, 
I think it's simple. Museums don't have a typology, so architects don't have to deal with a fixed set of rules and regulations. Right. In a sense, they're free to imagine the kind of space and building that they want to do. Yeah. And I think museums have liberated architects in terms right. of the possibility of what they can do. Yeah, and, and, and still using all the elements of, of verticality and, and light and, and all those other kinds of things because of the nature of what you're doing there is looking at art primarily. Absolutely, but museums are also very much spaces of public encounter. It's right. not only engaging with art. They're also very social spaces where people come to just spend time to think, to relax, to reflect, right. and obviously to experience art as well. Okay. This business about the tea ceremony house, mm -hmm. was it your father? My father was an architect as well. Was an architect as well, right. but he had something to do with... No, he designed many tea houses, oh. but his own style, with his own style. And this particular museum design, I was also, also asked to design the tea house in the garden. Yeah. So this was my first tea house design. All right, take a look at this. Classical tea house design layouts that seem to go nowhere lead into open areas without warning, a frame view of the courtyard opening. All right, finally there is the, explain it to me, what do I see? Well, this is a f facade of the new uh, National Museum in Tokyo, the Gallery of Horji, Horji Treasures, was finished about two years ago. So this museum, uh, this picture is showing just still it's under construction, you can see it. This is possibly the most beautiful museum built certainly in this century, and it's like a bento box full of surprises. It, it is so unbelievably beautifully resolved, finely detailed, and it looks so simple, just two cubes intersecting, yeah. except to enter those spaces and watch the way in which the architecture explodes into space and then dissolves into art is one of the magical experiences that one can have. Let me talk on a couple of things now where we are. You're going to start construction in the fall. Absolutely. On this. Um, you're going to commit yourself to New York for, for a while. Yes, <laughs> I've been coming here, you yeah. know, for, for the past four and a half years. Yeah. The, it's been four and a half years since? Already since competition, wow. including competition time. Um, you will move this amazing content to Long Island City. Indeed. So you can still go to the Museum of Modern Art in Long Island? Absolutely. And we'll see? We'll have our programs in Long Island City from the end of June 2002 until we reopen sometime in very late 2004. It is without question controversial when you go through the process you went through. Some architects get left out, some, you know. Uh, it is because the nature of the process invites controversy. It invites controversy to the museum. It invites controversy to the architect. You know, because everybody is something that so many people wanted that they they're going to find lots of questions. W talk to me about the criticism and, and controversy and all that. Well, this is not a job for the faint of heart. <laughs> and, um, you know, you probably sh should get a sh uh, suit of armor as yeah, an inauguration right. present. No, I think the, look, this is, you, you do a big project in the middle of Manhattan uh, with the kind of profile we have and with the expectations we have. You're going to engender controversy from the arts community, from the architectural community, from the general public, uh, and from anyone who feels they have a stake in the institution's presence and history. But I've actually been surprised at how little controversy there's been. Of course, there were a number of architects yeah. who were disappointed, and there are those who want the museum ideologically be, to be positioned in a certain way or in another way. Right. But I think, by and large, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of support for what we've tried to do. And the controversy, such as it is, isn't bad. We should be about a debate. Right. The moment the Museum of Modern Art can be pinned down, it's a historical okay. institution. And that's what I'm trying to get at. What ought to be the debate? You're saying we ought to be about a debate. The debate ought to be about the nature of what? I think the debate ought to be f uh, grounded in what kind of art do we show, how do we show it, and what does the museum stand for? How committed are we to contemporary art? What is the relationship of contemporary art to the immediate past? Mm. And what kind of story, what kind of history do we want to reveal? Because we are in a, in a strange kind of way, almost like the museum of record for modern art, and yet we're not an encyclopedic museum. All right, now here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. Having won the competition, you know, and, and having, knowing what you were going to do, uh, if in fact they had come to you, come to you, and said, we want you to build the museum. We have decided without competition, without anything, you're our guy. Mm -hmm. We respect the work, we've looked at the work, mm -hmm. 
build us a museum, mm -hmm. would you come, you think, to the same conclusions? Yes. For me, it's very same. Yeah. Very same. Because, again, that was my competi competition, yeah. my first experience. Yeah. You wouldn't be any more bold? No. You wouldn't be? <laughs> no, it's because it's all, all the boarding options. Yeah. In other words, you, would, you wouldn't take any, any, if you had it in the beginning, you wouldn't have, therefore, taken more chances, been more risky, more anything, more dramatic, more, more, you know. This, this is a very important, interesting point. My architecture is always just like the reflection of what the, you know, sites and uh, programmatic requirements. Also, my, the way I want to, to do it for this architecture. So this is a very interesting point. Either because of this is a competition or commission, doesn't make any difference. That was all my architecture. What we have, what we will see there uh, is exactly what I wanted to do. What you wanted to do. Right. I can't wait to see it. Thank you very much. Thank a you pleasure very much. to have you here. Thank you. See you again. Thank you very much, Glenn. Pleasure. We are talking about the Museum of Modern Art, uh, one of the great cultural institutions in the world because it is a place that houses some of the great works of art in the world. Uh, and when there is a new building, uh, that houses a great cultural institution and entertains the ideas of some of the best minds in the country and in the world. Witness the number of different countries represented, even in the list of ten. Uh, it is worth talking about. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.